bear with me. all right okay so we're alive we are uh uh live streaming today with ricky byers thank you ricky so much for being with me oh it's a pleasure to be here with you jeff you know uh, i remember jeff i remember when I, when I called you once or twice and maybe five times to come down to Skid Row to be with us down there with the equipment and you'd bring the piano, you'd bring the whole DJ kit. I mean, you'd be killing. We And we were such a presence there. So when you called me to be on your show, I was like, absolutely. Well, thank you. And and um, I, I have a story about that because the the. I learned something about you doing those, and it is it is for my. Anytime I've shared this story, they said yes, that's the Ricky we know. And uh, um, before I get to that, I want to say something about because I want to, in case somebody's just tuning in, and if they watch back, I want to get this plug in before we move on to anything else. And that's your soul sisters thing you're doing a weeknight. Is that something that anybody can tune into? Yeah, they just need to go to soulsisterstoday.com and then they can find the link that will send them to uh, the Soul Sisters Network. Uh, and and uh, But they will have to register for it to get in. So it's not like as simple as this where you have to have the link that gets you into the waiting room and, and everything, but it's, it's, it's been, it's been pretty cool. Really wonderful. And, and uh, like we were talking a little bit ahead of time, the way this has gone for me, where I started off thinking it would be 30 and it's been to 40, the same thing has happened to, to you doing those shows. You said. Yeah. Yeah. Because you think you, it's a 30 minute, you know, refreshing time together. And then you start talking, and the next thing you know, it's already 30 minutes. Right. And uh, it's like that in the B-hood. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we could go two, we could go three hours in the B-hood and still, and still want to go some, some more. So, uh, yeah, that 30 minutes is, has now stretched to 40 minutes. I think we should have just done it for an hour, but uh, we thought 30 minutes would be seductive. <laughs> but, you know, I, I think... Uh, it's it's interesting in this short, we were used to having a really short attention span. And because we have so much time now, people, I think, are allowing themselves to sit longer and talk more. And yes. one thing that I've discovered is people actually watch these things that I do for an hour. They, they spend the time because they have the time more now than ever. Are you are you there? Are you hearing me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, and and I think that it's not. Just, I am hearing you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Can you hear me, Jeff? Yes. Okay. There's, uh, am I coming in and out? A little bit. Okay. Well, I might need to plug in my computer, my thing. Um, I have I have all the cords, but I have one more cord to plug in. But okay. uh, I, I should. <laughs> I should be clear enough, though. I have enough juice because okay. uh, I got juice. But um, I think that people are staying on longer because uh, I think we're, we have interesting things to share. Right. And I don't you know, I just think that uh, we might have more time on our hands, but we're still selective. If it's not compelling, we don't want to be spending our lifetime that way. Right. You know, we want these moments of our lives to be to be filled with at least I want the moments of my life to be filled with meaning and meaningful activity. So, and uh, yeah. Well, you, I think uh, it, what's really interesting about the time we're living in right now, it's making a lot of us who may have been racing around, filling our time up with lots of activities are finding ourselves to be slowing down enough to make things more meaningful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
and have longer discussions and actually just talking about things more so than we may used to have given us given ourselves time for. Absolutely. That's what the Soul Sisters uh, gathering is about at night. Uh, we hadn't been doing that. You know, there was when when were you going to do a every night thing unless it was a course? You right. know, and uh, we weren't thinking in terms of courses. We were thinking in terms of live gatherings in the park mm. that we would blast out on Facebook or, or we weren't even blasting most of that out on Facebook. It was just, you know, somebody would have a cell phone and, you know, and kind of, you know, send it out to the friends in North Carolina or whatever. But now with this social distancing and what have you, it, you know, people want to gather and uh, and just doing it virtually has become a commodity. I mean, it's really cool to do it that way. And we can have these conversations that we wouldn't otherwise be having. Right. So what, how many, uh, is it just women that are tuning in to your soul sisters thing? It, it, or are there no. any, no, any women can do it. And, 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 and uh, legend has it that a few men are in, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, okay. but, they, but we can see you when you come in. So if you come in, you better have on a wig or something, you know, <laughs> but, uh, um, but because, because in the B hood and, and, and uh, you, you know, in the Sunday devotionals, Rob Rashid and the musicians were saying like, well, what about the men? We want to be able to be part of a conversation too. And I says, well, we're going to create something for men too, you know, that, um, that we can, because I'm with, you know, I talk to men all the time. That's why I'm so cool. Men have shown me how to be a cool woman. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I want to, uh, when you're, how many people are showing up on your, on your, uh, soul sisters thing, how in, in general, and what's, what are the topics you talk about? Well, uh, we're talking about how to circle back to what's divine, what, how we're finding the way to circle back to what's divine. Uh, and we have, uh, it's not just Greta and I who are the co-facilitators of Sisters, period, but we opened it up. Uh, we had opened up the whole model to include the input of more women. And we call that design team uh, Zoom, the Zoom Sisters. And so the Zoom Sisters are the organizing team for this year. And so, uh, and there are about 12 or 13 of us. And so what happens is every night there are two sisters, uh, two, two of the Zoom sisters, like last night there was Leslie McGee, Leslie McGee and um, Monique Nash. You won't, might not know them. You'd know Leslie if you saw her though, because mm -hmm. Leslie used to help on the crew at Agape. Mm -hmm. and she's, this, uh, she's, she's this gorgeous African-American woman that just looks like an Olympian from, and always was stunning you know, mm -hmm. just a beautiful being. And uh, so Leslie and Monique talked about finding sacred space, their mm -hmm. ways to, to find how to create sac sacred spaces to return to and, uh, and what that was like. Leslie was, was talking about nature and the rhythm of nature and, and, and her peace that she finds in nature. And Monique was, she spoke about creating sacred space in her home in her little, she says she doesn't have a big place and her office is also the place where she is her living room. And, you know, it's just a small space. Uh, I can hear that. Okay. That, that's my granddaughter over there. That's she doesn't know that after 19 years, that sofa squeaks. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear that squeaking. So anyway, um, and that's what they talked about. And so every day there's a, there's a certain topic. My, my night is a Sunday night. So I want all your listeners to know I'll be on Sunday night and I'll be talking about shedding and decluttering and how letting go can, how I'm finding my way to what's really divine in my life these days, oftentimes by decluttering and letting go of things that I need to let go of. Uh, so, and that's uh, not physical things we're talking about we're talking about emotional mental uh, the whole the whole gamut of things uh, right but it begins with physical things mm -hmm. so it's it begins with physical things yes it's physical things uh so when i think of decluttering i'm i'm thinking hold on a second kiri cool can you go in over there because i'm hearing all your your noises okay all right thank you all righty. You can take the book with you. Okay. All right. 
or even come over here and be with me over here, but you're making too much noise over there. That's <laughs> we don't have to social distance if we reality is. <laughs> okay. Hurry up, hurry up. We're wasting time. Okay. So so the um the point with my with mine, and I don't want to give it away, you know, because I'm gonna talk about it Sunday night. Okay. But uh at this time in my life with so much changing. Mm -hmm. across the board you know it's just a change a time of change how i'm finding so much peace in going through things seeing the significance of it you know and knowing that if that time has passed you know to let it go mm -hmm. you know to let go of the clothes to let go of the letters you know and some letters you keep you know you know what's special and breathing through the process of all that and crying through some of it, you know, but just how uh, how wonderful or how deep it is, how deep and some and and soon wonderful. It's not always wonderful right away. Sometimes it's sad, mm. but eventually, you know, there's there, you know, it, I will return to joy. It all fades into God for me, and eventually, I know I'll get there, you know. But just letting go, physical, and then because that represents. You know, all that stuff I'm looking at represent represents an idea. Yeah. You know, it represents an idea, you know. Yeah. So the, that's going to be your topic on Sunday night, but you also have started doing a Sunday morning service. Is that correct? Well, I wouldn't call it a service, <laughs> but people call it a service. If it is a service, well, <laughs> it's a service to humanity's humor. <laughs> <laughs> and our intent to want to connect and have a good time together. You know, it's what you were talking about when you created this space of the green room and how we can have our conversations. I'm busy. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's just Marriott trying to get me to give get a free room. And we know Marriott ain't giving you none for free. Right. Okay. All right. So, um, uh, so being together in this time when we're being told not to be together. Right. You know, in a time when concerts are happening with people in different places and different spaces, to be together in a room with real life musicians making music together, feeling our connection together mm -hmm. and our jokes and our ease ease with with our selves, you know, with our natural selves being who we are, you know, it's just been so incredibly uh freeing for me mm. for me yeah you know and and i have to say from my point of view doing these things i, I don't know what necessarily any anybody i talk to gets out of it but when i'm done it has mm. done a world of good for me so yeah. it's almost it's become sort of a selfish thing in a way because this does so much for me when i'm talking to people and yeah. and just our conversation and now i want to get to something quick while i'm thinking about you because this is this is where i i see you and where i've learned about how to describe ricky buyers that i know so you call me and we go down to do these skid row things and and let me just say uh, you know there are some crazies down there and they're and they just they can't help them they who knows what their stories are right we don't know that Not as crazy as they were at agape <laughs> <laughs> that's true that's true you know uh uh i i think akili was saying to me one day he goes you know we we all show up broken here and weird and um and that's sort of true sometimes at, at agape but uh um so are you there ricky yeah i was just plugging in i was just plugging in my uh, thing yeah. that's, that's you so thought i left you jeff i didn't let me i didn't leave you <laughs> so so anyway so we're down we're down at skid row and i'll never forget this guy comes up and he was just his appearance was just crazed and he yeah. looked crazy and he was talking crazy. And, yeah. and this is this is how I describe you, is the way you stood there 
and listened and just allowed him to be him. And what I was getting was you were holding a space of love for him to be whoever he was. You mm -hmm. didn't back down. You just stood there and allowed him to be him. And then you were kind and said, he said something, oh, I, 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 I want to play the piano. And, and <laughs> stepped back and said, okay, play the piano. And he sat down and he started playing this magnificent <laughs> piece of me. And everybody whose mouths were just dropping. He was bad. Right. Right. So you remember. He, right? he was so incredible. Right. He could play so good. Right. Oh my it, God. It, it, and then, then he, he finished the piece and he stood up and went right back to just being this sort of crazy guy. But, but you just helped you, you like, thank you. And, but you were so kind and loving to him. And that's yeah. how everybody sees you because it doesn't matter how anybody approaches you. It's almost like you give them a virtual sort of, uh, uh, energetic hug as they approach and you just hold them while they're standing there that's how it felt to me and how you always made me feel just oh, thank you around you oh well you thank you <laughs> you know you know I, you know all i gotta say is we're all worthy you know what i'm saying it's like when he showed up and he had all that energy right i you know there was he didn't know i had a gun in my back pocket though <laughs> <laughs> I had a gun on the left side and a and and, and, and razor on the second. So I know I had bang bang and Carazer. I said, "Dude, you don't you don't want me to go crazy down here, you know?" But uh, no, no, no. It was it was it was um it was just one of those things. I always know. I don't know how I know, but I know that it was it's that everybody in that park knew who he, the people in that park knew who he, who he was. They knew him. Right. And they knew me. Right. And if they knew that I was in danger, they would have jumped up there so fast that I wouldn't have been able to have done anything. This th this is the love of the people there, you know. And that same day, I want you to know, uh, you might not remember this, but and maybe it wasn't that day, but it was a day when um, uh, it was one of the Christmas, because sometimes we go there right before New Year's Eve and... Mm -hmm. uh, you, I mean, Christmas Eve, you know, round, you know, round, round that time. Right. Um, we go different times, but they seem to always want something in December. And we were there and um, this person heard me say that I was hungry and that I didn't have anything to eat, you know, and I, and I had gotten uh, some donuts, I think from baby cakes, but all the donuts went really quickly. And, uh, and there was no, and I didn't eat the donuts anyway. I didn't really need that sugar without having any food. Right. And they took up a donation, the people on the street. They took up, I mean, they they heard that I didn't have any money. And then one of the people from, from Skid Row, they came, when I was done, they were like, you said you you, you didn't have any, here's some, here's some money so that you can go get yourself some food. And I was like, oh, what? Right. What? You know, I mean, that, oh my God. And I have a relationship. I, you know, I can go down there right now and they go like, Reverend Ricky, right. they, always, they remember me wherever I am. And right. anybody that I've been in contact with while I was doing what I was doing down there, they always remember you, you know, right. and they remember each other. They take care of each other. What a community down there. Well, you know, I got to tell you, um, there's a, a really missed conception or perception of what it is like down there and i remember one of the days and it was it was a december or something because it was getting dark at like five mm -hmm. and ended at four and the guy said you better get it get your stuff out of here before five because you don't want to be here after five but mm -hmm. i gotta tell you i did not feel a, a, i felt like it didn't matter because those who were there seeing me work with you were mm -hmm. like they weren't going to let anything happen to me Right, right. And, and right. I actually felt I, I did not feel any fear at all, like some stuff was going to happen. No, but I think what they were saying was, was not that you might be unsafe, mm -hmm. but after five, it gets thick with people down there. Oh, 
a lot of people began to converge. People that weren't there in the daytime. Really? See, I didn't even know that. Oh yeah, it gets thick. You know, the first time we did a music festival down there, we call it Street Lights. Mm. And uh, and it was so deep. Wait a minute, I still hear you, baby. Draw something. You up in here organizing. I got a little Virgo over here organizing. <laughs> <laughs> I keep hearing something like this, like, <laughs> You're gonna be crazy, Kiri Cole. <laughs> She's amazing. But at the Street Lights Festival, it was it was um it was a big festival that we did. We brought the Agape Choir down there. We bought a stage. We had booths. We had we we gave um, haircuts to people. We uh, uh, washed them up. I'm talking to my granddaughter while I'm talking to you. But oh, you know fine. we we had all kinds of grooming things going on. Uh, we had. Uh, healthy food snacks and we we had the chairs we weren't where we were in gladys park or, or saint julian's park we were over in the wine garden parking lot we had taken the wine garden the wine guard park parking lot and turned it into a festival venue mm -hmm. and with the stage and chairs and tent i mean it was amazing and we did this like in i believe it was like 2010 mm -hmm. i believe it was around 2010 and it was it was incredible. You know, I felt like I, I had my thoughts about it. But anyway, remember that movie about the soloist with um, yes. Robert Downey? Well, it was about a man named Nathaniel and Nathaniel played violin and cello. Well, Nathaniel showed up to play with us that day. Wow. And the way the people on Skid Row introduced me to him, they said, Nathaniel is here and he wants to meet you. And, and you know, and I, and I, and I, I met him because I've seen the movie, right? Yeah, you know, I've seen the movie. Yeah. I, and, and, I, and, I, and Nathaniel's there and, and, and I, I didn't reach out to hug him like we do in the old days, you know, right. when folks use the hug, hug, right. you know, you know, but I just, I kind of just, you know, kept, gave him his space. Mm -hmm. And I said, it's very nice to meet you. And I've heard, you know, I've, you know, I've heard a lot about you. People love you so much. And he seemed to be very, um, uh, I don't know, honored by my response that I didn't mm -hmm. hug, that I didn't press him. You know, I didn't try to take a picture with him or anything. Yeah. You know, I was like, you're invited to play, play with us today if you want to. Do you know Nathaniel became a part of the band that day? Oh, oh yes, he did. And he played. He played wow. and he came and played with me at a at a Christmas Eve program too at Agape, you know, oh, old Agape when it was on uh not at the Saban but when it was on Buckingham. He came shortly thereafter and did a, a Christmas Eve program. I mean, and then it was just it got to be too hard for him, so mm -hmm. I didn't invite him anymore to do things because he might not show up and that kind of thing, you know. And I didn't want to make anybody uncomfortable, but oh my God, the at the end of that festival, at the end of it. We picked up all the garbage, anything that was left in the parking lot. Nathaniel stayed to help us do that. Wow. And then after everything was clean and we were all ready to go, Nathaniel put, he had a, he had a green, because Nathaniel was clean, he had a green trench coat, army trench coat. He had a tam on his head, he had locks. Nathaniel picked up his, his violin, put it on his back, because he had a little case, mm -hmm. put it on his back. And the way I wrote this poem, I said, and he, he, he walked into a sea of black. What happened at five o'clock was that so many people began to converge on the street. They weren't there earlier. Whoa. They came from everywhere. That street was thick with people who don't have a place to stay. Oh, man. And it was a lot of people, Jeff. You know, and I, when I saw that, I was like, wow, this is unbelievable. I was like, wow. I mean, it was just, it was just like, you know, you know, and it could have been that at that point, it was just 1,500 people out there. Maybe there were 2,000 people, but you know, when there were only 200 and now you're looking at 2,000, right. it feels, you know, it's, it's crazy, but the people, you know, they, you know, it, it, it was that, that's what they were telling you. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Also, they're also telling you that. <laughs> yeah. 
So that was a long story. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, I love I love the story, but because uh, he was a, he's an amazing musician. Yeah, incredible. Yeah. So, but you know, uh, I had to cut him off too. Like I cut <laughs> off Rashid. Go like, dude. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. So um, now I want to ask you, uh, b because um, I first got into the the whole new thought movement in the like 98, 99, 2000s, in that kind of time period. And I don't know if you, you know, if today they were to make a hymnal of uh, in, that would go into all the new thought, thought churches, the way all the Christian churches have their little hymnal that hymnal would pretty much be filled with your songs. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it would, it would be Ricky, Ricky Byers songs, song book, you know, they're all yours. And the reason you just why gave me, you just gave me an idea. I'm writing it down, my brother. <laughs> right. <laughs> the hymnal. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so, but this is true. Okay. So I start playing, I, I, I come from this Christian background and then yeah. I get called to go do the uh, Science of Mind, the Silomar uh, retreats. Mm -hmm. And uh, I all for two weeks, uh, for a couple of years, I would be in the house band and all the churches would come in. But this is amazing is they had all these songs they would close this the and open the each of the services with. And they were your songs. Yay! <laughs> What? And I, I'd say, well, what's that song? Oh, I'd go well. Everybody knows it. Well, where's it from? Oh, that that's from Agape. That's Ricky Byers. She's she's down there at Agape. They don't come here. <laughs> <laughs> they got their own thing going. But so, so so now this is amazing. So this is my you. I have never told you this, but somebody said to me because at the time I was kind of trying to find a musician's work. And I was a music contractor in the Bay Area. And somebody asked me because of my connections that maybe I I could introduce them to you and I could meet you and I could be like their agent. And I actually sent a tape to Ricky Byers at uh, Agape. And, you know, I, I never got a response because I'm, I'm guessing that in those days you were getting thousands of tapes and, you know, getting <laughs> to meet you. <laughs> but 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 now this is what from for me back in those days to now I'm sitting and talking with you and I've had a relationship with you for, you know, over 10 years now. Mm -hmm. I, I'm a little little awestruck, but the music that you've made have be, is become synonymous with the new thought movement, I believe. Yes. Right. And uh, and and one I, th just this one I was playing to to start the, the the this one this one here hey right and and so i'm sorry but then you know then that, you, you know that's Kev mo on the on the banjo it is yeah did you uh, know that I, no, I didn't. I, well, see now. See, this is where I'm learning stuff. I, this is where I need to, need to learn stuff. Oh, he don't even know that's Carol Mo on the banjo. No. <laughs> A little bit more. But but then um, um, uh, one of my favorite, and and this is what I would really like people to to know is that in in the moment when Ricky was singing these songs with the choir back at Agape in Buckingham, and the 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 kind of energy that would move through the room when these when th this song in particular and there would be anywhere from 500 to a thousand people and and this song which was one of my favorites we let it be right what the world is coming to something higher we build our way to the greater love so i'm i'm going to pull it down a little bit because uh, i want to i just want to say when that song for me would play and the everybody in those days everybody knew your music because you'd come out and play it all night at the service and the energy that would wash through the 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 
um, sanctuary would was uh, it was it was so thick and heavy then just uplifting and it was almost like you would kind of rise up it was unbelievable and to to have that as uh you know two couple of times a week was for me such a healing transitional time to be able to be part of that and uh, i just want to say thank you for because that music was unbelievable oh yeah it was it was well, you know and it was what we were doing, you know, it's what we were doing, you know, and it's sometimes when you look back on what you've done, you can have so much more appreciation for it. You know, uh, I mean, I appreciated it a lot when we were doing it because I'm just a present moment kind of person and, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm fully present there. I think that's my greatest gift is mm -hmm. that in being present, you know, it's not that I have all these chops. Like a lot of people have chops and they, you know, they can play everything and they can, you know, mine is just being present and being present for the sound that's coming, mm. for what's coming right now and being present with you, you know, mm. like just being present. And, right. uh, and so because we were present with each other and the band, I mean, it's like, you got to be present. You can't be thinking about something else while you're taking a solo. You got to be playing there you got to be with what's going on and i just feel like the band you know the the, the sound crew the engineers you know the, the people who are you know it's like they never really get acknowledged mm -hmm. but that sound sounded so good mm -hmm. because not because just we were very talented we are talented but oh wow our talented is experienced and our talent is experienced in the way that it is because of that sound that it's coming through also, you know, so for those engineers at Agape, you know, those who have gone on like John Patoka, who is, you know, um, uh, uh, Jim McCurdy, uh, John McDonald, Tony Streets, Anthony Streets was the very first one we used to argue all the time. He was just like so mean, you know, don't step on my court. This is in the beginning days of Agape. You know, I'm going like, dude, what you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> All you got is two little teeny weeny microphones, you know. But uh, you know, and that became a full fledged sound system, you know, and then it got it kept getting up leveled and up leveled and Ted Blaisdell coming in there and you know, Jeff Payne, you, you know, right. you know, just the people who came to share was just a beautiful thing, uh, you know, just the way everybody was bringing their best, e even lighting people to make sure you were lit well. Right. You know, yeah. I mean, it's like everybody was giving their best. So that was a real golden era. Yeah. And we, yeah, and we, we have the tracks to represent it. Right. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. But now I want to ask you a little bit, though, because you weren't always in the new thought based on your songs. Didn't you come from more of a, a traditional uh, Christian kind of upbringing a little bit? I'm, I don't know. I'm just asking. Um, you know, I'm just looking at what I'm doing. I'm, I'm missing an adapter. So I keep waiting for the bars on my iPad to increase. But it's like it's like when you have a life sometimes, like the question that you're asking me, like you you start one place and you think you powered into the spirit and you realize that you ain't powered into nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you think you're gonna get stronger and you're getting weaker, Jeff. <laughs> I'm like, what is going on here? Oh my God. <laughs> There's yeah. one more piece we're missing. There's a little piece with, with the thing that you can pull like that. Would you look and see if you can find one more piece of this adapter? Okay, it's, you just look and see. It's just another little piece. Look around here, Kiriko. Okay, I'm sorry, you guys. Oh, that's, but, it's yeah, I started... Perfect. No, no, I had the best, I had the best um, spiritual journey in that I started um, in the Baptist. I got it, I got it. She didn't even get up to look for it. Look, and I'm, I'm trying. I'm, I'm like, you don't have to look anymore. She didn't even move. She already knew. She was like, you know what? It's nowhere but in her purse, and she don't even know it yet. <laughs> it's time for it's time for scholarship money. Don't be looking at me. <laughs> oh 
man. I'm just having a good. I'm having a good time. Well, me too. Me yeah. too. See, I'm you know, good time. this but is what I'm people, a, people so mean. I'm so sorry. I, no, I was just saying I was raised Baptist, and then we went Catholic, you know, and uh -huh. then I went, then I went free fall, and uh, and uh, and then I fell into new thought. It, it, what? How was that transition? I mean, for me, for me, it was so, so refreshing and almost like a, a release and all of a sudden, oh, it's this way. And it felt yeah. like burdens left me. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, that's pretty much. But, and, but the first time I was see agape wasn't my first experience of new thought. Mm. My first new thought gathering was in 1975 at, um, Little Carnegie Hall, uh, when Raymond Charles Barker used to have services there, and then they moved to Alice Tully Hall, and uh, New Thought was hot in New York. When mm. I arrived in New York in '75, looking for Stevie Wonder to get my record deal, and uh, <laughs> that's the truth. That's the truth. That's, I went to Stevie Wonder. I went looking for Stevie Wonder in New York City to get a record deal. That's another story. That's another show. But uh, <laughs> my uncle. My uncle told me, he says, look, if you're going to be in this business, I'm going to give you something to help you. And he took me to my first New Thought gathering. And the teacher was the incredible Raymond Charles Barker, one of the, um, um, he was one of the greatest teachers in the New Thought movement. Mm. Uh, he and Ernest Holmes. Hold on just a minute. Okay. Okay. Now I should have solved the dilemma. Okay. Okay. I'm at 12 points. And so, uh, he took me to, for, to my first New Thought gathering, and it was really good for me. Uh, you know, you had Eric, Eric Butterworth of the Unity U Movement at Avery Fisher Hall, Raymond Charles Barker at Alice Tully Hall, somebody else uh, down the way at some other place. I mean, they had the, oh, uh, Reverend Ike, uh, who, uh, ex extraordinary, uh, extraordinary prosperity teacher, and, and, and probably the greatest of the New Thought teachers in that time. I mean, the most successful one. And uh, uh, it was just a time to, to it was just a time to, to, to open up one's mind. And then you begin to live your life, you make decisions, and sometimes you are still needing to a deeper place to live from. And coming to Agape in the ways that I did, it provided uh, the next phase of my spiritual growth. So, you know, we keep, these doors keep opening to take us deeper into who we already are. We just need to remember. Mm, yeah. That's the, the thing that uh, I, I grabbed uh, right off is the idea that I no longer had to be bad and mm -hmm. that I, I was already good. And to come from that perspective rather than like, Oh, I, I'm, I'm just an awful person because mm -hmm. I, I got tired of being an awful person. Yeah. I mean, for me, it was like, I'm not a smart person. You mm -hmm. know, I got, I get tired of, you know, I got tired of feeling like I wasn't worthy, mm -hmm. you know, and that was kind of loaded into the Catholicism agenda, you know, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like, when I got clear, you know, that we're all, you know, oh, that, you know, that was just something that I misunderstood of the teaching, you know? Yeah. You know, I, I, you know, it, it, you know, it, it, they just have their own thing. I just, I would say that I misunderstood, so I don't make the teaching wrong. It's just that it wasn't for me. You right, know? right. Yeah. Gave so, me what I needed. Catholicism gave me what I needed. You know what? It, what they gave me? What? Black nuns singing their butts off. <laughs> <laughs> that's what. That's what Catholicism gave little Ricky. You know? yeah. <laughs> It was a black Catholic church and they had these black nuns, man. And the mother superior could sing like Dionne Warwick, you know, I mean, back in the day. And she was, they were amazing. And to hear them sing Gregorian chant and to hear all that sound going to me, you know, and then on the radio, you got Curtis Mayfield and you got the Beatles. I mean, it's just like, it was such a time for extraordinary music. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I, was, I soaked it all up. Burt Bacharach, James Brown, Motown, Stax, you know, mm. it, it was like, you know, Otis Redding on one side, you know, it's just, yeah. it was Peter, Paul and Mary on the other one, you right. know, <laughs> it was kind of like, a, it was kind of like agape, 
in, on the radio. Okay, so uh, what what made you you went to New York City to get a record deal with Stevie Wonder? Well, I got a record deal. I got a record deal with Muse Records. Oh, wow! Yeah, my first deal was with Muse, and so I went. I went to I went to New York in February of seventy five, and by the end of February, I did have a record deal. Oh man! I know. <laughs> what, what was that? What was that like? Did, what, I mean. Was that cool or what? It was cool. You know, I thought I had a deal with Warner Brothers. That was the discrepancy. You know, I had a deal with a small label that had a small, that, that didn't have a large budget. And uh, so I was never going to be the Shaka Khan that I wanted to be, you know, but I would be the Ricky that I came to be. And I would have to learn to appreciate the Ricky that I came to be would never be the Shaka Khan, you know, that mm. wasn't. I didn't come to be Shaka Khan. You know, I had to get clear about that, that to want to envy somebody else's destiny, you, 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 you pay a, a, a huge disservice to your own. Hmm. You know, that's, uh, and I actually have been having that exact conversation with my daughter, my 14 year old, right? Where she, she, there's something she wants to do, but she doesn't think that she's good enough because somebody else is this way so that what you just said is so valuable information for everybody mm -hmm. and and so you got your record deal and how many records did you make with that company just yeah. one because okay. it didn't take me long to know that you know i wasn't getting rich from that label <laughs> <laughs> what, I got, what i got was friends like I, because the person that produced my record was a man named Howard Johnson, who was a very celebrated tuba player and a uh, tuba musician. And, uh, and he also played baritone sax and Penny Wilson. He played a lot of things, flugelhorn. He was a, he was a genius. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and Howard, uh, introduced me to some of the most amazing musicians of that, that were, uh, that were around. And so I would eventually have a mentor. I would meet, meet him, have a, really get a, a real live mentor that was one of the creators of the New York Jazz Quartet who asked me to be the lead singer with the New York Jazz Quartet because he really loved the way I sang and he loved my spirit because I wasn't scared of nothing you know <laughs> I wasn't scared of nothing you know it's just like it, you know it's like I mean that was our first conversation he was like let me tell you something I just finished playing Olio a, 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 the most incredible complex song by Thelonious Monk and you followed me singing your own song and you didn't have any fear at all you know and I was like no oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm from Atlanta Georgia at this point I'm like what's there to be scared of you did what you did <laughs> you know and he took a deep breath he was like oh. and then he said I want to work with you you know, I want to work with you. You know, he says, you are something. And he did. He worked with me. Um, and we, uh, we, you know, he, he was very, I learned so much from Roland Hannah about timing mm. and how to really float with the music, you know, and uh, it's just something that is with me, you know, mm -hmm. you know, I couldn't, I couldn't stay there with the jazz quartet, the New York jazz quartet, it wasn't, it wasn't for me. And they didn't need us. They did not need a singer, mm. you know, and, uh, Frank West, the saxophone player would tell me that <laughs> 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 we were doing good for you guy here, <laughs> you know, but, uh, but it, you know, it was a great time. And, you know, I was in my twenties, Farrell Sanders playing with his band and writing with him. It was just, and, but, but all of that began with the album, with the deal from Muse, because it gave me a certain credibility that other singers did not have. Oh, okay. You well, know, I had a record, you know. And, and those guys, I, I, for, for me being a jazz guy, I mean, Pharaoh Sanders and, and Modern Jazz Quartet, I mean, wow. I mean, that, I love those guys. Yeah. And those all the time. And I, if I would have known you sang with them, oh man. Modern Jazz Quartet, the New York Jazz Quartet. New York Jazz Quartet oh, New York. Okay. Had, had Ron Ron Carter, 
uh, and uh, Frank West on saxophone, mm -hmm. Roland Hanna on piano, and I forget who the drummer was at the time. Then yeah. they split. Oh, okay. Ron and Roland could not come to terms. So Roland took New York Jazz Quartet, and Ron Carter just went on oh, about his gosh. okay as, as as a phenomenal bass player. Right. Yeah. You know? like Ron Carter is like, yeah, he's great in the jazz. I, you know, never, I never got to play with Ron, but I played with George what George Wade. Oh, George, okay. George Moratz, George Moratz, who was who's incredible, incredible. So mm -hmm. George, George, Greg Moratz is it George Moratz? Yeah, George Moratz, out of um, Czechoslovakia. Yeah. And, and then, then what? Made you, what made you go to Los Angeles? Um, I met Ronald Muldrow, who's uh, who played with the Eddie Harris band, but mm -hmm. I met Ronald Muldrow who. Uh, I was convinced was the man that had pro that had been prophesied that would come from the West with a mustache and a beard and that we would write these songs that would be healing songs and go all around the world. So I just thought that he was the guy that, uh, I mean, all these, I mean, the people were coming out the woodworks going like, well, you know, you're in New York, but it's, it's going to happen for you out West. Hmm. You need to be in LA, the astrologers, you need to be in LA, you know, the psychics, that I didn't even know were psychics that were giving me information. They were like, you know, you need to be in LA. <laughs> you know, so they could see that something special was for me in LA. So when Ron came from LA, you know, I thought he was the one, but he was the one to, to, to get me from New York to Los Angeles. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. He got, I, there was no way I would know how to do it. Right. And my husbands were good for that. <laughs> <laughs> the first one got me from Atlanta to New York. You okay. know? And so, you know. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So so you're in Los Angeles and, uh, you know, I know you you finally met and, and Stevie Wonder. Right. Well, yeah, I had already met Stevie Wonder. Right. But uh, uh, but I and I had given him given him a copy of my cassette tape. That's why I was looking for him to see what he thought about my music. <laughs> mm. And uh and 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 well it's a long story about how I how how about New York and Stevie Wonder cuz Stevie would would have been more Midwest but he was on a tour and doing what he was doing. But it gave me a reason to go to New York. You All know, right. so I I would meet I would really meet Stevie Wonder a little more, you know, in years to come. Right. Yes, I would. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, that's kind of what I was getting at, because at Agape, uh, you became uh, there musically and f for the new thought movement is sort of the the uh, uh, the hub of of the universe and the new thought movement. And mm -hmm. every being there in Los Angeles, everybody goes to that church. Right. They I mean. Yeah. Well, they, they used to. I mean, it's it's changed quite a bit now. But but there was a in the in the early two thousands until two thousand ten, especially it was uh, giant, right? I mean, uh, well, till till till, till two thousand um, till till two thousand eighteen. I mean, it, it had quite. Uh, I mean, with the choir, uh, and well, just when I was there, I just think that the chemistry between Michael Beckwith and myself, mm -hmm. I think. As a songwriting duo, it was just really extraordinary what we, the music we were able to write. And I was a composer before I ever came to Agape, like I've already said, you know, it was just that, um, uh, uh, meeting Michael and walking into the field of hit the teachings as, as, as they flow through him, right. you know, they would have a, another kind of significance because he taught from a deeper level than the teachers that I heard in New York, you know, mm -hmm. and I could always, you know, and, and, you know, and, and it's, it, I guess it's human nature to put people on pedestals, you know, uh, mm -hmm. I think, uh, but even before human nature, I don't, I, I don't even know if it's human nature to put people on pedestals. I think it's religiosity that mm -hmm. makes you want to put people on pedestals. You want the priests to be better, you know, you think the priest is better. You think the bishop is better than the priest. You think the, you know, 
the the the, 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 the arch you know the the archbishop is better than the bishop and you got all these different levels of um of hierarchy which says that you know i'm above you i'm above you you know so eventually that becomes well you know pastor is the man you know you know and yeah. and and pastors way up there and usually the women are putting them way way up there mm -hmm. you know so it it becomes hard sometimes on men especially and and some women pastors too to really live up to that pedestal that they've been put on you know and uh, mm -hmm. what i never wanted was that i never wanted even that that whole notion of first lady i just really got it when tim mcafee lewis came to the church and he was like you're our first lady but nobody was using first lady as the mm -hmm. as the minister's wife i'm going like but i'm but we're all first you know okay, okay. So we're all first. you know it's like we're all first you know and, and 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 even now you know i'm just real thankful just to be myself and to and be able to tell people there, you know, just be you. Don't try to be me. You know, you you ain't gonna be me. Right. It's like you know, only I came to be me. Just like I ain't, I can never be Shaka Khan. And believe me, ain't nothing like singing with Shaka Khan. The one time I almost pro committed professional suicide. Ain't nothing like singing with Shaka Khan to know that you ain't gonna be that. <laughs> Oh, that's her heart. She got my note when I, I'm everyone. She she looked at me. She just did that note. We did oh. a duet. We did a duet fundraiser for the youth and family ministry once at Agape, and it was that was an incredible experience yeah. to sing with Chaka. Man, I was scared to death. Oh. <laughs> but you know, I got it from 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 um, from an, a perspective of a guy that was at Agape and just an observer. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times I, I wasn't necessarily ever in any circle other than the sound guys, you know, and, and some of the musicians, but yeah. as an observer, uh, the, the one person that stayed true to just being who she was, was you. Mm. And, and you were always, uh, uh, humble and gracious and we, pe the people that would line up to talk to you after every service <laughs> and you just would give them your time, the same kind of person you were it, down on skid row. And, and I got to admire you because of what you just, and having seen some of that pedestal stuff and have people walk in the church, don't you know who I am? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know? And I like, no, I don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> And they, and they, they want to give me the clue. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes the finger. <laughs> right? Exactly. You know, so I mean, and, and it doesn't, it's still a church and it's still people, you know? Yeah, it's still people. Yeah. So, so the, the, you have, uh, from my observation in, in my, in my humble is you remained true to you through everything. And, and there is, uh, another uh, couple, uh, Reverend John, uh, and I, I've never known his uh, his last name, but Reverend John Hagen. and Hagen and his wife. Yeah, Reverend and, John Hagen and Reverend Jean, yeah. Reverend Jean Hagen and John Hagen. Yeah, yeah. And, and that couple is it, it, I. Those two are another uh, that were the same. You know, they really yeah. stayed true to. Uh, oh, they're, they're amazing people. Right. You know, they're amazing people. And let me tell you why I say they're amazing far beyond. And they're great ministers, too. Mm. And they are. Uh, I, I mean, they're just amazing. I just love them. But I love them because of what the, how they were with my mother. Mm. Like they loved my mom. They mm. would come every week or every other week if they, you know, and just sit with her and be with her. And uh, they didn't come to see me. No. Came to see mama. And they, you know, they sit and have their conversations or do what she was doing, you know. And if she had, if she was into a really good book, she wouldn't want to put it down, even while people were around her, you know. But n near her last days, she she just stopped reading so much. Mm. And, uh, and she would just be with people a lot more. But they would, lo they loved being with my mom. Well, they and took care of her. I remember uh, because I was an usher and, and 
doing that. And every week I had to put out the seat, you know, uh, yeah. your mom and them too, the three of them sat together in their, yeah. in their spot every, yeah. every week. And, yeah. and I, I remember that. And, you know, there's, there's, that's really cool. But now yeah. I, we just so you know, we've already been at 55 minutes and <laughs> it's barely, time to go, Jeff. <laughs> I've barely scratched the surface with stuff I want to ask you. But but be, before we go, you you've kind of in this this whole new direction. And we were talking a little bit about your website. But uh, I, I'd like to show this video, if you don't mind, off of your website, Freedom Freedom. And and then we can talk a little bit more and then and, and then wrap it up because we got places to go. Okay. All right. I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, is that over? we can go over time if you got the time. Okay. I got a little time. <laughs> okay. All right. So let me do my thing and get this play in here. Okay. Uh, yeah. The, yeah. And here we go. Wait. Okay. No, it's give me a second. Hank. There it goes. There it goes. Oh, I'm having issues, Ricky. Technical issues. Yeah, you should have done it from YouTube. Okay. You try to do it from my website. But you can tell everybody to go see the Freedom Freedom video on my YouTube. On YouTube. Okay. You got the music. <laughs> I got the music going, and now my screen's froze. <laughs> oh, there we go. All right. So, okay. I thought I was going to be really clever, but let me. Can I find that on YouTube quick while we're we're talking? You it, yeah, you can find it on YouTube, but um, I'd rather talk. Okay. <laughs> uh, and just have people go see freedom freedom name of the video is freedom freedom and uh, they can put my name up it, that song is from my time my oh my's time to fly album uh, uh cd and it's available on um all the ways uh that you can get stuff <laughs> uh just so you know i have your uh, website address uh up here it, it's home.rickybyers.org Right now, and then it's going to be Ricky, but it's rickybyers.org. Okay. It's, it's not home. Dot, it's rickybyers.org. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, All right. So, so and what, what sort of things do you have going uh, right now? And uh, you, you've written books, right? And yeah, I've, I've written books, but the things that are really going on right now, I have a book. Only, I've only written one book. But I, but but now I have my big hymnal project oh. <laughs> that you gave me uh, to 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 put in uh, that that would just be a book books songs of mine. Uh, but my my songs are included in the Unity hymnals and some of those um, uh, lots of uh, compilations where they put together you know a resource of, of songs. Um, and they've included a lot of my work in their stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful for all my friends in unity. Uh, right now, probably the greatest, uh, uh, the, the, the most important thing I can say is that uh, the, uh, the, be, the, the Sunday devotionals are very special to me. Uh, uh, they are very, they've been very successful. And uh, I, I didn't look at the number for last week, uh, uh, for last Sunday's devotional, but I, I bet, I'm willing to bet that we're probably at 13,000 views and uh, you know, we get a lot of people looking at the, looking at, looking at it afterwards through the week mm -hmm. and the music on it is, is exquisite. You know, it's beautiful. It's natural. It's, uh, it's, it's a whole nother way. It's another way yeah. beyond the church way, the regular church way of mm -hmm. being together with people you love talking about the ways that we can be better together. Well, you know, uh, th this is uh, my my feeling now about this. It, it to tie in with that is, I I was taught that I in order to be with God, I have to go to the church. But I don't believe that anymore, and I believe that there are so many ways I can be with God, and one of them is right now. This this mm -hmm. kind of thing is is a God moment for me, and 
I think if that's sort of what you're describing, it's it's an, just another way, it's another tool, another avenue in which we can use to become more godlike, more spiritual, and have a spiritual connection with people. And it doesn't have to be in a traditional form and sense and sitting in a pew somewhere. No, no, it's in the breath. Right. You know, the, 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 the reason for the pew was to get us to stop and breathe, mm. earn, you know, it's not hard, you know, uh, and, and, and it, I have a song about when there was no time and before there was a number, you know, mm. uh, the spirit did prevail in a song of ecstasy. And, but I should say when there was no pew, <laughs> you know, well, I there was I'll... no pew, people would just gather, they would gather and, and they would share information, you know, they would mm. gather and share information. Yeah. You know, there was a there was a song. I, I went on a bike ride today. I do this every day, and I was playing some of your songs. And a song that came up and made me cry. I'm serious. It made me cry, and it was uh, seasons. Um, I'm looking for the song right now. Um, always is it no? As seasons change. As seasons change, and yeah, I start, that's a beautiful song. and I shared it on my Facebook page. Because yeah. what you were singing about in that song was so appropriate for me right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's a song. You yeah. know, that's I wrote that. Song, um, that song was about my children growing up. Mm. You know, they were growing up. They were making decisions. I wasn't clear that they were wise decisions, mm -hmm. but I knew that they would have to learn on on their own terms. They couldn't experience the world through my through my view, they would have to learn to see it through their own eyes. And, right. um, and I was kind of broken and I had a daughter that was in New York and I was like, oh, you know, you left in the middle of the night. I know you ain't got no money. <laughs> <You know? laughs> she did the same thing I did when I was her age, you know, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, she was, she's smarter than I was, but uh, she, you know, she says, she said, you'll be okay, mommy. And then she said, you'll write a song about it. <laughs> 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 I was like, uh, and I, you know, it was really deep. I was, I was like, wow. And, and I, you know, she says, you, you'll be all right. You'll gather all of that feeling. And she says, and you'll put it in a song. And when I got to the piano, you know, I wrote, you know, I, I tried to write, I tried to write something deep, you know, but what was on my mind was what was out of sorts. Mm. And then something said, you know what? You got to be okay. Just right now, give a smile, mm. make a friend, pray a while and learn to stand, mm. you know, right. you learn to love, you know, what you can see, not what you can manipulate, not what you can control. You know, not even what you can plan for your children's life. You know, you got to learn to love what you can see right now and sing as seasons change because they are going to become who they're going to become, you know, and right. you got to let them go. You got to learn how to let them go. And that's what that song was about as seasons change. Mm. Now it means something totally different. My mom has passed, you know, right. you know, you know, my relationship with Michael has become something else. You know, it's mm -hmm. just. It's, it's moved on to something else, you know, and all those pieces that that's changed that, you know, the world has just flipped like nuts around here and people be believing all kinds of stuff, you yeah. know, and, you know, and, and what I'm doing, which is what I said in that song is like, I have to sing yeah, through the, yeah. through the changing of the seasons. Yeah. That's what I think. That's what I, that's what, what wrote through me and sing as seasons change, you know? Yeah. That's, a, yeah. That, that's one of my greatest songs, I think. I, I Well, I love it. And, you know, it really, I, I've mentioned this already several times, but the one thing that has continued to hold true throughout all of this is you have stayed you, uniquely you, and shared that with all of us so magnificently. Oh, and thank you, Jeff. And what I think, what I 
am guessing is happening with you is a similar thing that's happening with these live streams that I'm doing is not everybody tunes in, in in a live stream. And, and when I get this up, close it, there might be 30, 40 views or whatever it is, but in a week, it'll have doubled, if not tripled. And then a week later mm -hmm. than that, because people go back and listen to them. Somebody mm -hmm. texted me last night and said, Oh, I put it on almost like a podcast and listen to it while I go walking. And mm -hmm. wonderful. So, so I'm thinking, uh, you know, a similar thing is probably happening with your service and 13,000. Yeah, I mean, we had 15 for Easter Sunday. Wow. I mean, it, you know, it went, it went high. And yeah. I mean, those, those, and, and I have a beautiful uh, team, Ayana Stokes. Here's a mm -hmm. shout out to Ayana and Dorothy James, the singer and, and the B band, right. you know, with, you know, they're great. And, you know, it's just so, let's say, you know, it's, it's good in the B hood. I lost you, but did, are this, you still there? I, I can, yeah. there you are. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, uh, okay. So we're, we're an hour and five. We've, we've went a little over time and it's okay with me, but we probably should should uh, let it go. I want to uh, let you go and, and get into the rest of your day. And I, I so appreciate you. And and the one last thing I want to say, it, 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 this is something that you do. You remember people. And uh, I remember when um, uh, the, the church was moving and we had the final like Wednesday night service with the choir. And mm -hmm. you stood up there and gave a shout out to everybody that you'd met and known over the years that was in the band and all that. And I played like once or twice and you still thanked me for playing in the band. And I'm mm. like, what, where did that from? You know, and, and <laughs> Willard and Reverend Joyce, I mean, uh, Joyce and uh, people walked up and like, what? Look, Ricky just mentioned you. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, and you play too. <laughs> Well, thank you. I mean, I, it was okay. You know, I was, I was, I was, let me just say, I was really nervous because there's been some really good drummers sit in those, in that chair, you know? <laughs> so you held uh, that tempo. what's that? You held, that, you held the tempo. Yeah, that was, you know, that's the only thing I could do is just try to keep the, keep the time. <laughs> oh, and, no, no, you you know, Jeff, stop it. You can play. And, uh, you know, and it, it, it was, you were great. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to close this out with one of your songs. Um, uh, and I'm just not, you know, there's so many of them that I love uh, that I, I would like to play. But uh, is there what 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 song? You know what? Maybe this maybe this one. Let me just play this. Well, I'm getting out of here. I tell you, you play what you want. I got to go. My granddaughter is getting antsy. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, Ricky. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> hey.